One of the best ways to add movement and dynamic and expression to your music is to add automation. Automation is essentially the change in values over time. So for example, if you have a track and you leave your track volume at zero and slowly fade it up to full volume, uh, you can automate that in Ableton Live so you can change the value of that track volume from zero to whatever value that you want. So automation is incredibly value as a creation tool and as a songwriting tool, producing tool, but it's also useful as utility in live performance to automate your tempo, to uh, fade volumes in and out, to change panning of things, to adjust the dry wet of effects. So whether you're using this in the studio or the stage, automation is incredibly helpful. In this video, I want to talk about and show you how to draw automation into Ableton Live's Arrangement View and Session View so you understand how to make this happen. So let's start over in Arrangement View. I'm going to press Tab. I think Arrangement View is a little easier view to understand when it comes to automation. So we'll start here before we move over to session view. Uh, so to see our automation in, in arrangement view, we're gonna click this button or press A on our keyboard. And this is gonna open automation mode. Uh, Ableton has done a lot of work, uh, particularly in live 10 and uh, definitely live 11 to try to clean up the interface so you only see what you need. And this is one of those steps in uh, that direction. So a key concept related to automation is whenever you go to automate anything, you're gonna see two boxes. You're gonna see one box that, uh, the top box that represents the device chooser and the bottom box represents the control chooser. So for example, let's go to this audio track here. Um, you could see at the top here, this is my device chooser box. So I'm gonna go here and say, the device I wanna automate is the mixer. As soon as I do that, you'll see my control chooser pop up. What control on the mixer do I want to automate? You can see all the options we have here. Speaker on, on, uh, on, off, which is basically turn the track on or off. Uh, adjust our track volume, automate our track volume, automate track, uh, excuse me, panning or volume. Uh, crossfade assign, which uh, deck do I want it to be on, A or B? And then I can adjust my uh, sends that are going to my return tracks. So let's do track volume. I think this is pretty simple and easy to understand. Now, when it comes to automating in live and drawing an automation, uh, there's essentially two ways we could do this. One, we could press B, which is going to turn on our pencil tool, and I could just draw kind of free form. Uh, if I hold down command, uh, that's going to disable snap to grid. That's going to allow me to draw. Um, that's a, a really helpful utility. You could also change your grid. So I could right click here and um, I'm on adaptive grid. So let's let's like zoom in. You can see it's a little smaller. Let's zoom out so it's a little wider. And based on, because I'm on adaptive grid, based on uh, how I zoom in or out changes uh, how that works. Now there's also some helpful utilities where I could insert a shape into my automation by right clicking and doing insert shape, you know, which, which is pretty helpful, particularly when you say, I just want a fade out or fade in. Uh, now let's disable draw mode. And I'm going to delete all this automation. So within this track here, I'm going to, uh, let's just highlight. So we'll go all the way to the beginning here and let's hit delete. So let, that narrows this back out. There's also, if you right click, uh, uh, there is a clear automation mode that shows up after we do, uh, do kind of our, our automation there. Um, now let's say we wanted to just do a fade in and out over this amount of space. I could select this. I could right click and choose my fade and that's going to create a fade over that amount of time. That's a really nice feature. I believe that's new to live 11. If I remember correctly, um, that just allows you to really quickly get up to speed with, with what you need. Um, I have these handles here that allow me to kind of transform my automation in a lot of different ways. This is maybe a little more advanced than what I want to cover in this video, but you could see just by, um, just try this out and, and experiment just by moving these around. I can move where this fade happens. I can move the exact uh, value. Um, I could uh, click here and hold option to create curved automation. A lot of really incredibly powerful and valuable things that uh, I could do there. Okay. Now let me delete this yet again. So I've deleted my automation again. So we've talked about draw mode. We've talked about using uh, the insert shape mode to do this. Um, but let's talk about the final way. And this is what I do a lot of times, just as a quick way. This is how I work uh, to say, go from zero to a full amount. Again, I could do insert shape. It's probably the fastest way, but this is what I do. So I have my envelope up here. As I move my mouse up, you'll see this, this little dot shows up and it says zero DB. I could click here to create a breakpoint. Okay. Now let's say I want my fade to end at 21, uh, measure 21 right here. I click to create a, a breakpoint to set that to zero. Then I can move back and take this breakpoint here and move that down. Okay. Um, that's a real fast, easy way to create breakpoints and automation that could be really helpful. Again, similar, I could hold all option 
And you could see that I could do curved automation, um, uh, which is super helpful and is, a, again, kind of a nice way to adjust that automation if I want to. But creating breakpoints, uh, I find, tends to be uh, quite helpful uh, in Ableton Live as I'm working. Um, I would experiment as well, too, like copying your automation and just kind of moving around, pasting. So I'm just literally selecting space and doing copy and paste. I could duplicate my automation there if I want to. Uh, a lot of really useful, helpful things. Uh, you could simplify envelope, and then obviously you could clear envelope uh, if you wanted to. Now, let's, let's do a fade one more time from zero to measure 21. Let's right click and let's insert, insert a shape. Um, and uh, we've got this right here. Now, what happens if you start to have a lot of different automation? So we did a track volume, let's automate our track pan. What's super helpful in arrangement view is to make use of what's called automation lanes. So if I go to the bottom of my track here, we see this little plus icon, that's going to move my track volume into a separate automation lane. So I could fold this up if I wanted and I don't see the automation, which in some cases that could be bad because you 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 know maybe aren't aware that there's automation happening there. Uh, but it's super helpful when I'm automating my volume and then I want to go in, let's do mixer, let's choose track volume, and I want to automate my uh, track to pan maybe from left to right here. And we start to the right, let's go to the left in this case, and then we'll end up in center. So now I can add my track panning to uh, automation lane as well too. And again, we can fold those and we can unfold those uh, as well, which is great. So this is super helpful. Again, if you have a lot of automation per tracks, um, typically, I, I think this is happening more in the studio when you're automating effects. And again, anything that shows up in this device chooser uh, box, control chooser, can be automated. So really quickly, this is more than I want to show in this video, but really quickly, let's add like an auto filter. And I'll show you the same concept applies here. Now that I added my auto filter to my track, I could choose auto filter. That's my device. Here's all my controls. I have a lot of different controls. Let's choose frequency. Let's talk about what I mentioned earlier, just having it go from zero uh, our frequency all the way to the left up to the right here and if i click through you see that automates the frequency which is great so that's a look at how we could do this in arrangement view let's press tab to go over to session view how can we draw in automation over uh, in session view so if we have a midi track the way we do automation over in session views is based on clips so if i have a midi track i could double click on a clip here to create a clip a, a dummy clip or if you've actually recorded a, a, a part in, let's just really quickly, um, again, I didn't plan to do this either, but why not? Let's drop wavetable in here, okay? And I'm just gonna record a quick bass part. So I'm gonna grab my keyboard here. Okay, and we'll record this. Okay, worst bass part ever in the history of the world, but I've got a clip recorded. Now let's add some automation to that. I'm gonna double click on this clip. It's gonna open down here at the bottom of my screen. And I wanna to go to this icon here. And this is new in Live 11. Uh, it's similar in Live 10, it's gonna look a little different, but in Live 11, this is my envelopes box, okay? Just like we talked about device chooser, control chooser, it looks a little different in session view than it does in arrangement view, but it's still the same. So envelope, I'm gonna to go to wavetable. And this time I wanna, what do I wanna automate here? Um, so we could do oscillator on, let's do oscillator one wave position, okay? And I'm going to just create a quick automation here within my clip that's gonna go from zero all the way to 100%. Now if we play this, okay? Uh, which is super, super nice. Now, there's some other things you could do in session view, like instead of using automation, use modulation, which is basically going to keep your value where it is and modulate between those values, which could be helpful. You could link and unlink your, your envelope and your automation uh, based on your clip. That's beyond the scope of this video. But essentially, I want to show you, um, we can use a MIDI clip and within that MIDI clip, we could automate um, all types of different things. Now we could go here and again, do the same thing we did before where we're automating, say volume. So let's go to mixer, let's choose track volume. Uh, I could do the same exact thing here to where I say, I want this to, uh, to automate in so that as that plays, it's gonna fade my uh, track volume in, um, which could be super helpful. I could disable uh, this uh, loop here. And let's move our start point here. Okay, so we're gonna start our fade in.
okay? And then you're gonna see it's gonna loop and keep our volume consistent here. Now, if I go back to this, let's go back to where we, wave table here. You can see that um, I have a separate length loop for this, right? This, this automation is tied to the length of this clip. Um, I could disable this and change my loop to stay here, change my start point. Again, I said it's beyond the scope of this video, but we're talking about it anyway, because it's just, it's fun to mess with. Um, and now uh, this automation is going to continue to stay uh, the oscillator position is going to stay here. The volume is going to stay here as well, too. If we go back and show you that because of how I unlink that. Now, we'll maybe dive further into that later in a future video. But again, I just want to show you that's how we could create. Uh, we could do breakpoints. We could do the same thing. We could draw our automation in by uh, pressing B and going into draw mode. Um, we have the same kind of functionality. It's just different in session view because it has to be tied to a clip. Now, what about an audio track? So let's go to this audio track here. I can't double click to create an audio clip. Uh, so what do I do here? So if I'm recording, so I've got, hello, hello, got my vocal. So let's record a vocal real quick, okay. Test, this is my vocal, test, test, test. Okay, and we'll turn monitor off. Test, this is my vocal, test, test. So now that I have a clip there, I could do the same exact thing. Again, I could go to my envelope box here, say mixer, track volume, and uh, let's just draw, uh, draw some automation in here like this, so now we hear. This is my vocal test. test, test. This okay. Is my vocal. But what happens? That's that's helpful again if you're recording, you're in a, a situation where we're recording clips. What happens if you want to hear your vocal? And let's say I want to automate an effect on my vocal. So this is going, again, this is going far more in depth than I initially intended with this. But let's uh, let's delete our automation here. So we'll select this. We'll delete. Um, I'm going to delete this clip. And I want to make it to where I just always hear my vocal come through here. We'll disable it while I'm talking, but I want my vocal to come through and I'm going to have a reverb. Okay. Let's go to audio effect. Let's go to just a normal reverb here and we'll drop this in. So when I talk, right, pretty crazy. There's our decay. Okay. And I want to make it to where I can automate this reverb. Uh, let's say dry wet. Okay. How do I do this? Again, I can't double click. Uh, I'm not recording. I just want this to pass through. Uh, I want it to just constantly be live. I'm, you know, again, maybe using this for live performance. And that's why I want this to always pass through, but I want to automate my effect. How do I do that? So it takes a little bit of work, not much, but here's how we do that. So I'm going to change audio from right now. I've got my interface set up. Uh, I'm going to say audio for, I'm just picking a channel that has nothing in it. Okay. Nothing has been recorded here. Uh, I'm recorded, uh, record enabled this track and I'm just going to click on this clip for a second and okay, really quickly stop that. And what I now have is a dummy audio clip. It just means an audio clip without any audio recorded in it. Let's rename this and let's call this a uh, verb fade. Okay. Now what I would do is double click this. Let's go to our envelope box here and we're going to say, what envelope do we want? We want reverb. And actually it's pulled up dry wet. Cause that's the last thing I used. And I'm going to say, let's take this from zero and let's take this to a hundred percent. So we'll do our breakpoint editor there, create our breakpoints and move that up. Um, and now again, we, we want this to always pass. This is going to be a little distracting for a second. Cause you're going to hear a double of vocals, but I'll turn my vocal on here. Uh, monitor is set to in let's change audio from back to external in. So that to one, there you go. So you hear my vocal, there's no reverb. I've got this clip pulled up, my monitor is set to in, which means only monitor the incoming signal. Okay, so I turn it off so I can talk so I don't hear it. But monitor in means only monitoring the incoming signal. There's nothing recorded on that clip. I'm not gonna hear anything on that clip, but I'm using that clip automation to automate the reverb. Okay, so let's turn this on. I want you to watch dry wet and just listen to my vocal as I talk. As I'm talking, the dry wet is going from zero to 100%. Uh, and I could stop this clip if I wanted, and that's going to stop at whatever value I was at. And I could turn that down to bring that back to zero. So uh, again, that's that's further, that's deeper than I intended to to go uh, talking about just drawing automation in Ableton Live. But I, I hope that gives you a couple ideas you can process and work with. Again, in arrangement view, I think it's a little easier because you have automation lanes. In session view, your automation needs to be tied to a clip, but you could create a dummy MIDI clip. You could uh, create a dummy audio track. If you're not recording, you're just processing live. Um, or you can actually record a MIDI clip, record an audio clip, and add your automation onto top of that. Now, if you like this video, 
then you're a smart person. And if you're a smart person, I think you're going to like the rest of the content we talk about on this channel. It's all about using Ableton Live either in the studio or on the stage. Uh, and I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central. So to see that, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon because when that new video comes out, you could check a notif notification on your phone if you have the YouTube app and go, okay, he's talking about this today. Ah, I don't care about that. I'll skip it. And then tomorrow, check it out. Yeah, that sounds like me. You could click through and watch when it goes live, 10 a.m. Central every single day. Thanks so much for watching this content. We'll see you on the next one again, 10 a.m. Central tomorrow or 10 a.m. Central the day after that. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.